I love songwriting and it's probably one of my strategies for mental health and well-being as well because that's quite often how I express myself. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Okay, so thank you for all coming along. Excellent. When we started our BU journey, I just had to, I couldn't pass up that opportunity of not writing a song to sort of go with the initiative. <laughs> my name's Cathy Smith and I'm the music specialist here at Corbinia Primary School and I'm also the mental health and wellbeing coordinator and generally what that role means is that I'm helping along the implementation of BU. We sort of started our journey towards the end of 2018 and this year obviously we're planning even bigger and better things as well. I tried to make sure that lyrics included the message that I felt BU was trying to give which is about being yourself and you know, not trying to change yourself, being proud of who you are. Children really enjoyed singing and it made sense to them. Awesome. Okay, that was a really, really good warm up version. Okay, we're just gonna talk a little bit about and remind ourselves what we're singing all about. So, who would like to share some ideas of how this all started and what we're singing about? Asena, did you want to say something? Sometimes you just need to remember that you are a great person and you can do lots of things. Absolutely you do. Madeline? Um, so, like, compared to the song, if you look on like a magazine and you think, oh, this girl's prettier than me, you, you don't need to think that because you, you would already be prettier. That's right, because you've got that self-confidence, haven't you? Awesome answer. There'd already been some good programs going around the school to address some of the, the children's needs, but we'd had quite a big change in our um, leadership team. So what we did was we did some surveys, and the results of those led us to um, have a big focus on staff wellbeing last year, which, as I say, we thought probably was a need. So we decided the staff wellbeing was really important. Um, you can't pour for an empty cup. But also it showed us with the children that there were some areas in resilience and like dealing with friendship skills that also needed addressing as well. That's when I discovered that BU was happening. Before we started it, there wasn't a huge emphasis on wellbeing. We were sort of stuck. So I started to do some background reading about it, was very excited about the initiative and found out that you've got help and support from a consultant. So that was my next step, was to actually get in touch and was very lucky to get Ariane. I'm Ariane, I'm a BU consultant with the WA team. BU is about making sure that not only the children are getting good attention, but also the teachers. You can't teach others what you don't have yourself. So, welcome to Roots and Shoots today. It's great to have you. What we're going to do today is work on the wheelbarrows that we've got. There's one over there, one there, and one over there. So we've got Elaine on our staff, who is just such a dynamic personality. She started an initiative called Roots and Shoots. My name's Elaine Lewis, and my role at the school is as the cross-curriculum leader. And what that means is embedding the three cross-curriculum priorities, and those priorities are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures, Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia, and sustainability. So it's very inclusive and we've deliberately done that for the well-being of the children, very much so that the children feel at peace within themselves and they're in a feeling of well-being so they're able to learn and able to take on board new understandings. Because remember, if you leave the roots exposed, the plant may not survive, so we need to make it... I think you need to go right down to the bottom of the wheelbarrow. Yeah, I'm at yeah. You did a really great job there, and you can watch that grow over time. OK? Yeah. My next step was then to form an action team, which is what you do as part of the um, BU initiative, so that you're not doing the whole journey by yourself. It shouldn't be about that. It's a team effort. Um, I've got a lovely bunch of people on my action team here. Today's lesson is about how we put out friendship fires. So Beck, um, Beck was actually the person that brought friendology to our attention. Let the person have time. 
Why is that, why is that important? My name is Rebecca Melville. I'm a year five classroom teacher. Basically, we've been working on rolling Friendology out through the school. Really, Friendology is a program that gives them back that power over their relationships and um, teaches them the key skills of how to navigate those. I want you to crumple the paper together. Do it. Okay, pause. So what has happened is essentially this is what happens to your heart when people say unkind things. This is what happens. So have a look at the paper. Think of it as yourself. They've apologised, you've accepted it. What I want you to do now, open the paper up and flatten it out on your desk. Can you get all of the wrinkles out? Can you smooth it so it looks exactly the same as before? No. 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 It still leaves an imprint on our hearts, doesn't it? Then we've got Roz, who's a year one teacher. Have a seat, find a spot. Make sure you make a good choice. And she does a lot of meditation type activities and calm activities. And she also uses the zones of regulation. What zone were you in before we came into class, before we did our meditation? Who can tell me? I was in the blue zone because I was kind of tired. I'm in the yellow zone because everyone was screaming in my ears. I'm in the green zone because I'm happy and calm. Okay, so we always want to be in the green zone so we can learn properly. So we need some tools to help us get in the green zone, don't we? So let's have a look at some. And as I say, with lilies, you can get them that young starting to think about that sort of thing, then it's only going to be better as they get older. It's actually a skirt, but I made it like hair. Like <laughs> <That's> hair <thin. laughs> Oh, <laughs> and lastly, Lena. She's been running uh, an initiative called PUPS, which stands for Pop-Up Place Spaces. Make, girls, make sure that we're using kind words at PUPS, okay? We're always using kind words. My background was childcare before I went into education department, and I loved watching children play. For me, that was the most important thing of the day, and I noticed how through play they learnt other things. Yay! <laughs> I think BU is individual for everybody, it's not a one size fits all thing, but I think because I'm a parent of the school, I've seen a change in, in my son particularly. <laughs> Come on in. Hey Melksham. Hey, where was your Hello. BU has given us some stepping stones to help us get back to where we once were. Okay, chocolate. So how was school today? Good, okay, mummy. Yeah? What'd you get up to? Not much. Not much? <laughs> School, what'd you do? Work. Yeah? Before Friendology and BU, Carlos wouldn't really share much of how he was feeling. I think he just felt like it was, oh, okay, it, it's fine, it'll go away. He's opening up a little bit more and he's sharing. And it's not, it's no, it's not about, oh, it's not important anymore or it doesn't matter. It, it actually, like, it does matter. And this is how I feel. P-E-L, sorry, ugh. <laughs> P-L-E-A-S-U. <laughs> Hi, Carlos. Hello. Come on in. Okay. Come and take a One seat. One of the things we decided to do with Friendology um, was to actually introduce some one-on-one -on -one Friendology coaching sessions. So, um, what do you think maybe some of the things you could do to overcome these feelings of nervousness? Ask for help. Yeah, ask for help. That's always a big one, isn't it? If you're struggling, don't feel... I have seen him become a lot more confident, a lot happier within himself. You can actually see a physical change in him. He feels better about himself, and I think he feels more equipped to deal with um, those situations he found tricky before. Sorry, I get a bit teary, but I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Sorry. Just... Okay. <laughs> oh, I did it! Oh, I did it! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go. Let's go, So, some of the things that I do to make sure that I look after my own mental health and well-being are spending time with my family. Music, as I've already said, is, is a great outlet. 
Um, so it's really just finding that you know you're not sort of getting too carried away with your work all the time. You are actually consciously making time to do things and actually making time for you. Thinking of an adjective about your classmate that describes them. Kyla, kind. Miles, smart. Carlos, compassionate. We're just excited to um, acknowledge the part that BU plays in prioritising the things that are really important. Well done. Give yourselves a pat on the back. One, two, three. Well, well done, me. Excellent. I think that's the most significant thing, is a culture of nurturing well-being, and everybody's responsible for it. It's been amazing, actually, to, to actually physically be able to see for myself the change in staff. Also, just making people more aware and more willing to talk about mental health and well-being because it's always been a little bit one of those things that's tucked under the rug a little bit and I think it's nice to start being able to bring it out into the open. My hope is it will just continue to grow and it actually will then become embedded as part of what we do as a school. So it just, you know, keeps going and going and we, you know, just carry on our BU journey.